We are recording. So, um, welcome to the webinar today. Today, we're going to be walking through the content editor of the new website. Um, <clears throat> we most definitely will not get through it all today because we are trying to keep these webinars at 30 minutes. So um, this is the longest part of the training that I do. So I know we won't make it and I don't want to rush. If you have questions, if you've been in webinars before with me, you know, just interrupt me. Um, you can either unmute your mic at any time during the presentation and ask questions or just type in the chat box, whatever works best for you. Um, so I'm not going to go through how I'm getting here, but I'm just going to, oops, that's not the page I want. Um, I'm just going to go to a page so I can show you the content editor. So when I talk about the content editor, what I'm talking about is the body field um, where you type in your content and have access to all of the icons that allow you to do different things. Um, so we're going to walk through each icon. Some of them are going to be familiar to you. And some of them are going to be brand new and um, I'll throw in as much information as I can. And if we don't get to it today, I also have a nice little um, page full of helpful tips, tips that help make the content editing experience a little bit easier. Kelly can't hear me. Um... Okay. So it's just Kelly. So hopefully she just has a speaker output issue. Um, so the first icon that we're going to go through is the table icon. And I'm also going to try and share some things that are different. Um, so the first icons that you would notice on your current sites are probably the, the copy and paste icons. We've removed those um, not because they aren't helpful, but because a lot of browsers, um, and I'm using Chrome right now, a lot of browsers don't actually allow them to be used anymore. So they're just, um, there's only one, maybe two browsers that actually they're usable in. So it just seems like we might as well remove them since most people wouldn't find them useful. Um, so the first icon we have is the table. The table should be used to present information in a grid or matrix um, that demonstrates relationships between variables in an easy to understand fashion. So we don't want to use tables to lay things out. We only want to use them when it makes sense, either in a text or numeric um, context uh, so that we can make representations between the table. And it's incredibly important that we don't use tables for layout purposes for our assistive technology users um, because they, just like sighted users, scan a table to make associations between data in the table and their appropriate row and or column headers. Um, assistive technology users make those same associations with tables using column headers. So again, tables should not be used for formatting just to present data. And obviously try to keep your, temple, or your table simple, which is easier said than done at times, I totally understand. So we're gonna go ahead and click the table icon. Again, if you're editing a site right now, this is probably going to be very, um, something that you're very used to. It's got the table properties where you can set up how many rows or columns, headers, border size, alignment, width, height, et cetera. Um, <clears throat> a couple of things about the table properties. If you are like me when you're building a table, you really have no idea how many rows or columns you're gonna need just yet. Um, so it's totally okay to not know. You can add or remove them later. Um, so you can, you can edit based off of what you know at the time in the table properties box and then add to this later. Headers are incredibly important for not only our sighted users, um, but also our assistive technology users um, <clears throat> because they uh, give that association. So um, you have the option to do the first row, the first column, or both. So depending on how you're laying out your table, those are all options for you. It just helps with context for the table and um, also helps visual users as well. Next up is border size. This is a personal preference. Um, it's defaulted to one. My personal preference is to remove the border size entirely. But it is again totally up to you and how you want your table to be visualized. The alignment is um, not set by default. And I just want to be very clear about the alignment. 
When you choose an alignment in the table properties box, you are choosing the alignment of the table itself, not the content within the table. You can set the content um, alignment when you're back in the editor. So this is just for the table itself. With, I always remove this um, only because the table is going to size based off of the amount of information that you put into it. So really the width is a, a null and void um, field. It doesn't matter if you set it or not, it's still going to size appropriately. And that's to help with our responsive design, which means that our um, mobile and tablet users get a good experience as well. And then um, cell spacing and cell padding. This is just like border size. I remove it because that's my personal preference and leave it blank. Um, but if you want to have cell spacing or cell padding, you can either leave the default or you can um, increase those numbers as well. So again, totally up to you. And then the caption um, is basically like a header for the entire table, like a heading for the entitled, entire table. Table. Oh my gosh, I can't talk. Um, it basically just helps your users find the table, understand the topic, and decide if they want to, you know, scan the table for additional information. Captions are incredibly important for web accessibility. It helps screen readers, screen reader users find, navigate, and understand the information that's in the table. You don't have to describe the whole table in the caption. Just try pointing out what the importance of the table or the information within the table is. And this summary is more for complex tables. So since we try to keep our tables as simple as possible, a summary is not necessary. And you'll notice that none of these are required fields. So you really get to pick and choose which ones you want to use. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and just hit okay and leave everything as the default so that we can walk through um, the rest of the table. So I'm going to pause on the table for just a second. Um, when I put my cursor into the body, I did not put a space above the table. And if you will notice, I really have no way to add a space now, um, which is unfortunate because a lot of times I'm going to want that space up there. So you might notice this red dotted line that keeps appearing as I hover um, over the top of the table here. And this is what you're going to use to add a paragraph either above or below an element that you've added in the body. So this doesn't happen or need to happen when you're just adding text, but when you add one of these elements like a table, um, you've got to use the little red insert paragraph here. So you're just going to um, move your cursor over to the red arrow and click the arrow and it automatically adds a paragraph above the table. Um, I'd love to tell you guys how long it took me to figure that out, but I would be embarrassed, so I'm not going to. <laughs> so, um, the table, again, like I said, you don't have to know everything you need to know about the table when you first insert it. And right clicking with tables. the table is. I have off. not. Oops, someone's not. But maybe we're supposed oh. to. There we go. Okay. So, um, right clicking within the table. And this is going to be true for most of the things that we do in the editor is right clicking within that is going to bring us um, some additional customization options. So we have um, cell options, so you can insert cells, you can delete cells, you can merge them, you can split them. Um, you can even go to a cell properties box that gives you tons of additional information. Um, only some of this is actually going to allow you to put information in there. Um, for instance, you can't add colors, um, but you can adjust some of these things if you want to really customize the look of the table. Um, for the most part, though, you're going to be using the row and column options. And this is going to allow you to insert rows before or after wherever your cursor is placed, placed as well as delete rows. Same thing with columns, insert the column before or after wherever your cursor is and then delete columns as well. So it really does allow you to just um, completely customize your table once you insert it. So you don't really have to do a whole lot um, within the table properties window. But if you should need to get back to that table properties window, it's just right here in that right click menu and it brings it back up and allows you to adjust and change things from here. Um, now, I will go ahead and put a uh, first row as the header here so you can see it does add a slight visual adjustment 
um, to the way that first row looks as well. Next up is the accordion. Um, you might have seen these. Uh, we just recently added these to some of the other sites, and so a lot of people have really been getting into using them. Um, my extension, I know, has a ton of use of accordions. Uh, the software page, the uh, virtual education task force page also is using accordions. Um, so when you insert an accordion, and I just clicked the icon and it inserted this, and it's basically showing me what the layout of my accordion is. Now, none of this except for accordion title and accordion content are actually going to show to the user. Um, the title here where it says accordion, these dotted lines, they're just for me as an editor to um, grasp the, the layout of my accordion. It's not gonna show on the edit or the view screen for users to see. So I will say that <clears throat> accordions are a little bit finicky, so I'll kind of teach you how to work around those. Um, but basically accordions, I would say are somewhat of a replacement for anchors, but both still have their place. So accordions are just like the vertically stacked headers that you can click to reveal or hide that content that's associated with the header. So by default, they're all closed. If you open one and then move to open a different one, it's gonna close the first one. So there's only ever going to be one accordion open at a time. It really just allows users to have control over the content that they are visual, visually seen by expanding or deferring it for later. Um, so it just lets them decide what to read and what to ignore. It's really useful on pages with a significant amount of content that isn't all relevant to the user at first glance. So um, as I've moved sites over, some of the things that I've used accordions for would be newsletters. Um, I might put the 2021 newsletters outside of the accordion, but if a site owner wants me to keep previous years as well, I might put them in the accordion. So they're still there, but they're not taking up a bunch of space on the page. Um, <clears throat> so I said they're kind of finicky, and I'm just gonna show you what I mean. So naturally, um, the way that I wanna do this, I wanna highlight the accordion title one, and I wanna delete it and start typing. That's my natural inclination of how to do it. Um, so I'm gonna hit delete real quick, and you'll notice it completely removes the layout for the uh, accordion title one, which I don't wanna do because my accordion's not going to work with that not there. So I'm just gonna undo real quick, and the easiest way that I have found around this is instead of hitting delete, is to just start typing. Um, so I highlighted it and I just started typing and this kind of prevents it from uh, removing that whole label around the header. And the same thing is true for the accordion content areas. If I delete, it's gonna do the exact same thing to me, um, which is so annoying. So just highlight and start typing. And there you go, uh, easy. So, what if you want more than two accordions? Because you do, of course you do. Um, it's the same thing as the tables. You're going to right click within the accordion and you can either add an accordion tab before or after um, wherever your cursor is, or you can remove accordion tabs from here as well. Okay, any questions so far? Um, the third icon is the horizontal line or horizontal rule. Um, it's called both. And this is just a visual. I'm going to add a little space so you get a better look at what that looks like. It is just a small visual separated line. Um, so it is basically used to separate content, maybe add some white space. It's visual only. Um, so it is only helping our sighted users more easily understand content being presented, but it's not hurtful to our uh, assistive technology users. So it can be used at your discretion. This is a very personal preference in my opinion. You either like to use it or you don't, and it doesn't matter either way. Um, some of the ways that I personally like to use the horizontal line are, again, if it's a huge piece of uh, 
huge page of content and I just want the visual separator because it feels like a lot to take in. Um, and there's an easy break between the content. I'll use a horizontal line just to kind of separate it out a little bit. Um, if I have a heading and I just really want to draw importance to it, I might um, put the horizontal line underneath of it, kind of like a border underneath. And sometimes when I'm feeling fun, I'll do a horizontal line above and below a header to kind of box it in. So those are the personal preferences that I have for using the horizontal horizontal line. Um, but again, it it really is just when you want to use it and if you want to use it. Um, next up, we have just your basic text formatting options, bold and italic. You'll notice we don't have underline as an option anymore. This is for accessibility. Um, links are the only thing that are supposed to be underlined for accessibility purposes, and those are all done by default. So if you were to put an email address in the body field, the website would automatically link it for you. You don't have to even add a link to it. It's automatically going to pick up that it's an email address and link it for you once you hit um, save. So no need to use underlines for those things. Bold and italic, this is just the same way that you're used to doing it either on your current website or even in Word. Um, you're either going to hit the bold or italic icon before you start typing, um, or you're going to highlight your content and add it after you have typed the content. Um, and just to remove those, you're just clicking the icons again to completely remove. The next icon is the block quote icon. This is just what it seems, um, something that will help call out uh, quotes within your content, super helpful for news articles. It doesn't add a bunch of formatting, um, but it does add just a little bit. So you can see here, um, and this is what you're going to see when you hit save, which is one thing about the new websites we worked really hard on is what you see is in fact what you get when you hit save. Um, so it adds a small border on that left hand side, just a small gray border. And when I start typing, you'll notice that it actually increases the size of the text just a little bit. Um, so not a bunch. I can't spell. And so it just brings it out, separates it a little bit from the regular text. There's also a small indent, um, which you can probably see if you compare it to this little gibberish I wrote up above, there's a small indent for that text as well. Now, you might be asking, why does it need to be bigger? Isn't the font size big enough already? Um, if you have looked at any of the new sites, you've probably noticed that the font size of the site is by default larger than what you're used to. And um, it is, we've done this by design, and it's a lot to get used to, we agree. Um, we've spent a lot of time trying to get used to it ourselves. It seems huge in comparison to what we're used to. But it is um, the minimum required size for accessibility on our website. So that is why it is the size that it is. And yes, it does take a little bit of getting used to, but now I look at some of our older sites and I'm like, man, that is so tiny. And I should pull out my glasses that I have contacts. So I don't need glasses, but um, it does. It does take a little bit to get used to. Um, so to get rid of the quote, as you'll see, I hit enter thinking that that would take me out of the quote. It won't. Um, I can either hit enter again and it will take me out of that quote formatting. Or you can also just click the quote icon again and it will remove the formatting and take you back to your normal body text. I am going to skip the anchor icon for a minute because we have a little bit of work to do on that still. We'll get back to that one at a different time when we go over more of these icons. Um, but next up are the bulleted and numbered lists. Again, exactly like what you've been using either on your current Word websites or in Word. You can either add the bulleted or numbered list before you start typing. Or you can actually um, highlight content that you've already created and hit the bulleted or numbered icon list and it will it will make your content into lists. So um, again, 
Same exact thing if I want to get rid of it, I just click the icon and it goes away again. It takes me back to my normal formatting. Um, now, if you remember when I talked about alignment for the table, I said if you set the alignment for the table in the table properties, it's only aligning the actual table, not the content within the table. Um, the next three icons are your alignment icons. So obviously by default, everything is aligned to the left, but you do have a center alignment and right alignment as an option. And so if I wanted to align the content within my table, and you might notice as I'm typing, as I type those first few um, lines, my table is automatically adjusting to my content, and that's exactly what we want it to do. Um, if I want to apply alignment to the actual text within my table, and this works for the body as well, then I can just um, apply that alignment using those alignment buttons. And that works within the table as well as the body, works within the accordion as well. Anything that you can add via the content editor can be added into the accordion. So images, videos, et cetera, can all be added as well. I'm going to do the link and unlink icons next, which again should be super familiar for most of you. And then since we are just about out of time, I'm gonna wrap it up for today and we'll continue on at our next webinar, which is two weeks away. Um, so the link and unlink icon again should be very something you're very used to. If you want to link something, you highlight the text and you click the link icon and it brings up this very small and handy um, URL field that you can type the URL into. So <clears throat> a few things about links. Like I said, the content editor automatically links web, ad web addresses and emails that are in the content editor, so you don't have to manually link them, just saves you a little bit of time. One thing I wanna say about links is try not to add an actual URL into the body field of your content. Um, not only is it not a very good user experience for sighted users to have to look at a full URL, because let's face it, none of them are short, um, but it's also a horrible experience for our assistive technology users because Assistive technology like screen readers, they don't know how to read a URL, um, so they read it letter by letter or um, uh, element by element. So they have to listen to the entire thing basically spelled out. So instead of pasting, copying and pasting a full URL into the body field, try to hyperlink text. Um, make sure it's descriptive text too, not click here or read more. What we're looking for when we hyperlink text is if I only looked at that hyperlink text, would I understand where I was going if I clicked on that link? So without any context from the surrounding content. So if I see click here or read more, I'm not getting any information about where I'm going to be going. So it might be um, view the publication or register for the event or just a little bit more description when you're hyperlinking your text. Um, obviously try to keep them to a minimum, but I also just told you to make sure they're descriptive. So use your best judgment about what that means. So, um, I'm just going to go ahead and we'll pick one of my URLs here and I'm going to hit save. And now we know that this is linked because it's red and underlined and there's a little bit of a hover, um, style applied to it. Now the unlink option comes up now that there is an actual link to talk about. And if I want to remove that link, I can just hit the unlink icon and it automatically removes the link. Questions. Feel free to unmute or type in the chat if you have questions. Okay, so in two weeks, we'll be continuing on with the content editor. We still have the uh, paragraph formatting, some cool styles that we've added, um, the media library, a content template option, an icon library that you have access to, as well as an insert HTML icon at the end there. So we'll be discussing those in two weeks at 10 a.m. Um, Two weeks Tuesday. Yes. 
The accordion feature is one of my favorite new features, Todd. <laughs> I'm so glad we have it now. Um, oh, and of course it is accessible, so that's awesome too. All right, I will give you guys back five minutes of your day. I'll post this recording once it's saved and um, you can find it on, um, I'll put it in the Teams message and send it out in the um, email, the next email that I send. So everyone have a great Tuesday and we'll hopefully see you all in two weeks.